If you like my content here on YouTube, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will also get access to four extra videos each month on the 7th, 14th, 21st and 28th. Polls, pictures, previews and much more. Come join the fun and thank you for making my channel possible. Oh, I've got a beard. Roman literary shouldn't have a beard, maybe I should shave. Well, check this iconography out. You see, Roman legionaries with beards. Not very common, but it did happen. So, with that out of our system, let's get to today's topic. Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. So uh, first and foremost, sorry for my uh, Lorica Segmentata because you will notice that it's not perfectly shut here and that is because, you know, that's how it should be and it, it would be if I had my Kingulum Militaris, so the military belt that you normally wear uh, around this part, usually a little higher, um, to, you know, help push these plates in place, but unfortunately my Kingulum Militaris at the moment is in America and also, I've been, I have been eating a bit more pasta than I should, but you'll have to imagine that this is like this. But with that being said, today we're talking shields, and here I've got a beautiful, beautiful replica of a Roman rectangular shield that was very common in the Imperial period. And we're going to talk about the way these shields are gripped. So we know that Roman shields, and generally speaking, we're going to look at two kinds of shields today, uh, this one, and then the previous model, of which I also have a replica, so I'm going to show both of them and we're going to look at their design and shape and how they influence not only the kind of grip that they have and that was chosen for them and, and I, on this video I'd like to prove that it was a choice a specific choice uh, because of that of the design uh, but also they will influence the kind of armor and gear that or equipment that is going to be used together with the shield Okay, so generally speaking, when we think of strapped shields, we think of medieval shields. So we might think maybe the Romans didn't have that technology because, you know, we're talking about the classical period. And when we think of strapped shields, of course, you've got the kite shield that is strapped, uh, usually normally by the Normans, and we see that in iconography. And uh, yes, sometimes uh, even kite shields have got bosses in the center, but they have a different purpose, partially decorative and partially just of reinforcement of the center of mass, but they're not there to close any hole because your hand is not needing a hole because it's not center gripped so your shield is strapped on and uh, that's the same for heater shields that sometimes they are completely horizontal other times they are on a diagonal line but they are strapped on and the same for late medieval Italian rotella usually used by late as I said late medieval uh, infantry so yes quite a lot of medieval Italian shields uh, sorry not Italian quite a lot of medieval shields are strapped. Not all of them, but many are strapped on your arm. So, is it a medieval invention? No. In fact, it's not even a classical invention. I mean, the idea of strapping the shield on your arm, it's a probably a Bronze Age invention, because if you think of Greek shields, then yes, they are strapped on, given, in a different way. In a way, even a bit more Le probably less com comfortable and more complex. I definitely rather prefer to have a strapped shield and meaning a medieval strapped shield with all of the padding. I think it would be more comfortable. But yes, Greek shields were strapped and obviously the Romans knew quite a lot about the Greeks because I mean even today obviously geographically we're just neighbors and we also know that if you look at uh, early Republican Roman warfare and the uh, during the Kingdom of Rome as well the uh, so not only the Roman Res Publica but also the Regnum Romanum uh, we know that they were basically copying the Greeks before warfare became specifically Roman um, in a very uh, typical Roman way, uh, it was basically copied by the Greeks, the same did the Etruscans, even the Gauls, we'll talk a bit more about that, and basically was the phalanx formation, that's what it was. And so, strapped shields, circular, the armor was also similar to that used by the Greeks, some examples here, and, uh, and, that, and, so, and that was the same with, with a long spear, similar to the Greek sarissa, and uh, as I say, strapped shields. So, they knew it, and they abandoned it. And uh, the proof that I have for you you, the Romans did in use occasionally strapped on shields was is this piece of iconography here now given this is an auxiliary soldier uh, which makes all the difference really because auxiliary soldiers were not really given equipment usually they were carrying on to the battle the sort of equipment that they did have already from the country from the culture so it doesn't really surprise that we see that but it is surprising when we think 
Maybe the Romans didn't know how to strap shields to their arms because, I mean, it's in the iconography. They see that, they even give it to the gladiators. Sometimes they specifically choose not to give strapped on shields to the citizen soldiers. Why? Splendid. So we have established that they could have done it and they specifically chose to go for a center grip. So what advantages does a center grip give compared to a strapped on shield that you... I don't really want to say where because it's partially worn but you're still holding it and depending on, for example, the heater shield, you've got lots of different ways to do it. Even if you've got straps, you can still hold it if you want uh, in the center. You know, there are lots of different configurations but generally speaking, we know you can't um, strap on a Roman scutum. And in fact, that is the first point I'd like to draw. You can't do it because of the fact that it's curved. So look at it this way. If you have a flat shield, it doesn't matter if it's rectangular, it doesn't matter if it's square, it doesn't matter if it's circular. If it's flat, you can wear it or you can hold it. If it's domed, you can still wear it uh, like this or hold it. But the more it becomes curved and Roman shields were very curved, then at one point it will become impossible to wear it because there will be a massive gap between your arm and the surface of the shield and it's going to be difficult. What, what are you going to do? Are you going to attach it to your elbow or are you going to have like something going? It's going to be awkward to do that. So first, I think the fact that they choose to go for a centrally center gripped shield is because they want and they prefer the shields to be fully curved. So why do they, why is that so important? And that is because, because in a way, if you think about it, you go from a two dimensional defense to a three dimensional defense. So what I mean by that is yes, a shield, any shield is closing lines of attack. But we do know that if you have a round shield, for example, and you know whether it be center gripped or whether it be strapped, if you hold it away from your body, and, it, and you can do that even better if it's center gripped, then you will close more lines of defense. And then if you hold it close to your body, you know those lines of defenses, are, defense you have, you're still defended, but a bit less. And with a big shield, because remember Roman shields are big, they are long, they protect a lot of your body. In role-playing games they're called tower shields and it kind of gives, it's a nice word, it's not historical but it's a nice term because it gives you that idea. They are big which means they're heavier and heavier shields you can't hold them like this for a very long time away from your body to close more lines of defense because you know you're gonna tire and I know that some people are gonna be like no I can do it look yeah great now do it for an entire battle not gonna happen and in all iconography that shows Roman soldiers with rectangular shields uh, you, you see that they keep them very close to their body because that way your arm is in a rested position and you can hold it and hold your defense for a much longer time without uh, you know, achieving exhaustion. So that already is a problem that you have to face. And so now that you can't really close as many lines of defense as you could have if the shield was relatively away from your body, then you want to close more lines of defense around you with the shield being curved. And in this case, again, it's good to have it center gripped. But secondly, I think the reason why they choose to want to have shields to be able to protect more on the sides of the soldier as well, and not just the front, is because because of the sort of warfare that they were having at the time. For example, when the Romans were fighting the Gauls, we often imagine, because of the movies and the way that, generally speaking, barbarians are represented, we always imagine these barbarians running towards the Romans, the disciplined Romans, and then they start trying to kick the shields, and then the Romans stab them to death, and you've got this wave of suicidal idiots to just run onto the compact and square Roman formation, which just kills them like crazy. But that's not the truth. This is not what the sources of the time, so period sources in Latin, tell us. What they tell us, and that includes Julius Caesar, so Julius Caesar who actually went and fought the Gauls in Gallia, they tell us that the, the, the Gauls, so the barbarians, fought in the manner of the Greeks with very compact phalanx formation. And I've already brought up all the historical evidence, reading and translating Latin for you, on my video dedicated to the Britons. So I'm not going to repeat all of that. I'll ask you to believe me in this case that that's how the Gauls fought, according to the iconography and according to the historical evidence and sources. But if you, if you do want to see that, then I refer you to that video and you'll find a link in the description below. But because of the fact that now you have to imagine a more realistic kind of combat situation between a full 
formation, compact formation of Romans against a compact formation of Gauls. Okay, so imagine that I'm a Roman and I'm fighting. I've got a guy in front of me that I'm trying to stab, but then there is a guy right immediately right next to him there, and a guy right next to him there. And yes, the guy in front of me, he tries to hit me. I've got the helmet on, I've got my armor, and I've got the shield in front of me. Most of his attacks are gonna go towards probably the shield. But if my shield was flat and not curved, and the guy right next to him tried to stab me, um, this would not protect me. Instead, the Romans keep this in mind because they know that their opponents are using compact formation and so they want their shield to give them three-dimensional protection so that I'm protected from that guy and I'm protected from that guy because the shield is going around my body. Now that's important because if you think about it, the shield, and that's another thing I wanted to say, um, influences the sort of armor, the sort of equipment that you're going to issue to your soldiers. Because even in the late medieval period, we see that they abandoned the kite shields that were providing very good protection all the way down to your legs, and they go for heated shields, which were smaller. Why can they do this? Because now the legs of the knight and men at arms, and even, even I mean, crossbowmen at that period, were completely protected in full plate. So you don't really need as big of a shield and it's a similar situation I mean at the very beginning in the Roman Republic very early Republic soldiers were using these and these are greaves in this case made of brass uh, but they disappear as the shields move from being circular shields to being uh, you know overly shaped bigger shields or rectangular shields further on but then they will come back in the late period in fact this is a replica both of these of a late sort of um, imperial greaves and they come back as the shield become smaller. Now of course these will be used even in imperial times and in republican times by officers sometimes and we can understand why. Officers had the money, why not getting some extra protection? But the idea is a bigger shield, which remember is made mainly of wood, is going to allow you to not give these to your army, which after Marian reforms, and I mean general soldiers, after Marian reforms, that's, that's important. Um, and, and even before Marian reforms, because yes, it's true that it's the soldier that is going to pay for his equipment, whether it be before the Marian reforms or whether it be after the Marian reforms, it's just a different way of paying for the equipment. Because before the Marian reforms, if you have the money, you get these. If you don't have the money, you don't get these. Um, and after the Marian reforms, you get the entirety of your equipment, but then it will be removed from your pay. And usually it took about a year for a soldier to pay off for, for his entire equipment. And often then you, you would start making a profit and for what you were doing. But re whatever the case, they're made of metal and they need to be made specifically for you. And you've got, you know, tens of thousands of soldiers and lots of legions, just make the shields bigger. Make sure that they protect the legs so you don't have to give these uh, greaves to, uh, to each single one of your soldiers. It just makes it easier, more economical, and still very good protection for your soldiers. So there is that also that needs to be kept in mind. Now, this is the kind of shield that you normally see in Republican iconography. Uh, we see it all the time. It's oblong in its shape, a kind of um, overly shaped. It's still center gripped and it's relatively big, although size can change from soldier to soldier. And that's something that we know that happened because it was mentioned in the sources. And uh, we, we know Latin writers, including Vegetius, if I'm not wrong, who tells us that sometimes you, get, you had soldiers with bigger shields and sometimes you had soldiers with smaller shields. But generally speaking, particularly Primarian reforms, but generally speaking, it's a big shield it protects the majority of your body and the, but it does it is a bit different when compared to the imperial shield so let's have a look at the imperial shield very quickly so this one here is the imperial shield and i think most people well i like calling it imperial shield because generally speaking it's found in imperial um iconography statues but what i mean it's not that clear of a line uh, we don't exactly know pinpoint specifically and perfectly when they started using these but we do have an idea for now let's just call it imperial shield rectangular shield maybe it's better um, this shield is at the same sort of grip but we see that it has a bigger um, boss you can see it's a square and it's bigger whereas the boss of the other shield that we've got here this one here it's smaller and more oblong and it's got a central spine now that's interesting because to me what it tells me the fact that the boss becomes bigger in this is that it's a very um, vulnerable area so probably a lot of the i want to say 
arrows and bolts were arriving and were hitting the shield, generally speaking, in the center of mass, which makes sense statistically. And so it makes sense that in the second iteration of, the, of this kind of shield, they make that part bigger. But that's not all. The rectangular shield of later production is even more curved. And this gives me an important hint. In other words, they liked the curve and it worked. Because I mean, the Romans were very practical. When something works, they use it. And then they try, keep on trying to improve it. And in this case, it does tell me that the, they really liked the curve so much that they decided, yeah, this is the sort of design we want. Let's try and improve. And let's try and make it um, even more protective for the soldier. Which, it, it again, it tells me that a lot of the attacks that the soldier had to worry about, we know that the majority and, and worst attacks were a swing to the head, which is why they had helmets, of course, with a reasonable amount of padding underneath. Although medieval helmets have got a liner inside. Roman helmets, as far as we understand, the soldiers were wearing something on the head, uh, probably wool, sometimes even uh, with a harder surface and then they would put the helmet on top of that um, but uh, generally speaking the head was of course one of the main uh, problems and that's parts that need to be protected and that's obvious it's where you've got your skull is where you've got your brain and then the shoulders because of all the reinforcements and it's natural how a person can swing top to bottom trying to break this part but then the shield covers all the rest and I understand how, because of the fact that the curvature is now even more curved, and we can see this in the Dura Europos findings, um, we can understand that many of the attacks were actually coming from here, and this can only happen if your opponent is in a tight formation as well, and they're not just running towards you, which is basically the point I was bringing earlier on on this video. And I think that the design of this shield tells us that, because think about it, the Gauls did it. The Britons were doing more of a, uh, sort of guerrilla tactics. So maybe not the Britons, but the Gauls did it. Carthaginians did it, absolutely. Uh, we know that. And probably a lot of people did. And of course, when the Romans faced the Greek, it goes without say that the Greeks fought in the phalanx formation. And so it makes sense that this shield is designed with a three-dimensional defense in mind. Bene, nobiles mei. Spero fore ut haec pellicula tibi placuerit. Et si ita memento te. Pollice probando fawendum. Subscriben dunque se meo canali. Ad plura metatronis. Et memento te. Metatron. Sua salas pansit. Walete.